Welcome back true believers and all you gamers out there to another very interesting video. Not necessarily talking about any massive superhero video game news at this time, but if you guys do know me and are aware of my own personal tastes as an individual, you would know that without a doubt I am 100% a gamer at heart over any other type of media that is out there like that of movies, comics, and TV shows, even though I am a major fan of all those, I do prefer gaming above all else and just the gaming medium pushing the boundaries of entertainment even further and farther into the future, especially going into the current future of next gen with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And in my spare time and just as a hobby and just with general interest, I do love to conduct research and keep up to date with all the current news that is happening within the gaming industry. And recently, if you have been personally keeping up with the news, you would know that the three major companies, or I guess technically two, of Sony slash PlayStation and Naughty Dog have been currently reported with a recent article from Bloomberg indicating that The Last of Us Part 1, one of Naughty Dog's, if not Naughty Dog's biggest game, is apparently going to be receiving a flat-out next-generation PlayStation 5 remake of The Last of Us Part 1. Not a remaster, but a complete from the ground up remake. So not only do I personally think this is a massive waste of developer assets and just overall financial cost that it would take to fully remake a game that already runs perfectly fine on both the PlayStation 3 with the base game that came out back in 2013, but most recently the PlayStation 4 remaster of The Last of Us Part 1, which again can be played on your PlayStation 4, or thanks to backwards compatibility with your PlayStation 5. There are a plethora of other games out there that definitely deserve a remake from the ground up to go into next gen way more than what The Last of Us 1 currently holds. Now this isn't by any means to flat out diss on The Last of Us Part 1 because I am a major fan of that game and I do believe it is one of the best video games that has ever been made. But I definitely think that instead of focusing on remaking a game that is still fairly recent within the spectrum of new game releases, I wholeheartedly believe that PlayStation and just gaming developers in general should focus their time and well-spent assets elsewhere instead of remaking a game that doesn't necessarily need a remake in the first place. Although, I do fully believe the main reason as to why this is happening is so that Sony, PlayStation, and Naughty Dog can fully bank off of the upcoming success that the HBO Last of Us show will most likely gain from audiences who are going to watch it day one, and revitalizing the game in a fresh and new way with a remake on PlayStation 5 would surely get more attention for both the game and the show together. But before we actually dive into my personal top 5 picks of the video games I think we desperately need full on next generation remakes of is to actually clarify exactly what the difference is between a remake and a remaster. So basically, a remaster is the same exact game just completely overhauled onto a new console. However, the same exact base game is still there, it has just been improved for future consoles. Similar to what, again, we currently saw with The Last of Us Part 1 Remaster from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4. Most recently, in terms of the superhero side of things, with Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered from PlayStation 4 onto PlayStation 5, and of course the upcoming Mass Effect Legendary Edition with all three games being fully overhauled and remastered graphically, visually, and also including all the DLC chapters of those games as well, onto the current generation of consoles, or I guess next gen for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. So that is exactly what a remaster is, where it is simply taking the base game that already exists and simply overhauling it visually and with some better quality of life adjustments to make it run even better on the current gaming consoles that are within the general consumer market. Whereas a remake is completely remaking a game from the ground up in a fully new and fresh way. And great examples of this are of course the Spyro Reignited trilogy, where Toys for Bob did a great job of bringing that franchise back to life in a fresh and new way. The Ratchet and Clank 2016 game from Insomniac Games, which did retell the story of the first game, but again, making it run even better and just making a whole new system for it on the PlayStation 4. And one of the most well-known examples of this is obviously Final Fantasy VII Remake, which of course is a huge difference compared to the original Final Fantasy VII that released ages ago. 
So you can see exactly why a remake instead of a remaster for the first Last of Us game is pretty much unnecessary considering how well it already runs with the PlayStation 4 remaster of that first game. And even though I have absolutely no idea whether or not any of these developers or publishers have these potential picks in mind, for a next generation remake, this is just what I personally as a fan would love to see be fully remade in a complete next gen manner, either that of course on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. And if we manage to get even one out of any of these five picks that I have chosen, I will be absolutely ecstatic in more ways than you can possibly imagine. Now the specific rankings of my personal remake picks doesn't go in any particular order, but I am going to start the list with a two for one special, considering that both of these gaming franchises do originate from the same exact developer, none other than Sucker Punch Productions. And of course, recently we did receive the amazing Game of the Year contender, which I do think definitely deserved to actually win that award, of Ghost of Tsushima back in 2020. I thought it was phenomenal, the whole samurai journey that you go on as Jin and just realizing feudal Japan slash the island of Tsushima in just a beautiful way like that was absolutely gorgeous, but they have had little to no revitalizations for their previous franchises going into either current gen on the PlayStation 4 or seemingly now with next gen on the PlayStation 5. And seeing how we have recently received massive amounts of love for Naughty Dog and Insomniac with their franchises like Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and & Clank, and Spyro, I definitely think we need to see the same exact thing happen for Sucker Punch's previous games, both with Infamous 1 and all of the Sly Cooper games. So starting off with Infamous, I am actually of the minority, I do believe, that I massively prefer the first Infamous over the second Infamous. And not to diss on the second Infamous, because I do actually really love that game, but Infamous 1 is just pure nostalgia for me. I absolutely love the entirety of that game. The whole power trip aesthetic that you do get as Cole McGrath, pretty much being like a good guy Electro in that game was just a absolute mind-blowing experience to play back in 2009. And for me as a kid when I first played that was incredible. And of course, back then we were all theorizing and speculating that those were the developers who were going to handle Spider-Man PS4, but then it turned out to be Insomniac instead. But that whole first evolution from where they first started with Sly Cooper and then moving on to a more serious, more grounded slash hyper realistic esque superhero gaming type of experience in a AAA format, that was the game for me. And I definitely think there's a lot more to do actually with Infamous 1 instead of Infamous 2 in terms of a remake. Not a remaster, but a remake. You can then overhaul the karma system, making it either good or bad. One of the biggest flaws about that though is that it feels a bit too simplistic or a bit one-sided where there's not a lot of whole depth to Cole's character just by being good Cole or bad Cole. That way then you could try and revitalize the karma system in new and engaging ways, maybe input some new activities, add some more things within the open world of Empire City, more traversal mechanics, and just experiencing the original Infamous game for the very first time on next gen with the PlayStation 5 would be an absolute dream come true. Second Son I'm actually quite a big fan of with Delson Rowe and his character and just the visual aesthetic of the, that game was absolutely gorgeous releasing back in 2014 on the PlayStation 4 but if we were actually to get a PlayStation 5 from the ground up built remake of the first Infamous instead of Infamous 2 or even that with Second Son I think that would be a great way to bring back new individuals and get interested within that gaming franchise as a whole and maybe if they're not doing a Ghost of Tsushima 2 even though I definitely think that they are they could then try and fall back and garner more excitement for what the infamous franchise could become down the line. And like I mentioned previously, it is a two-for-one special, so besides Infamous, if I did have to choose any of the Infamous games to be remade from the ground up on PlayStation 5, it would obviously be Infamous 1, for me personally. But the other franchise that we have in store is my main man, Sly Cooper. And I've said this previously, I love all the PlayStation mascots franchises, so to speak, so Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet & Clank, 
and even Nathan Drake from Naughty Dog and the, the more AAA format stuff like Last of Us, currently with Spider-Man, of course, from Insomniac. But Sucker Punch, growing up, Sly Cooper was always my favorite of the bunch. Not Ratchet and Clank, even though I think they're great. I was never that big of a fan of Jack and Daxter. I love Crash Bandicoot as well. But Sly Cooper has always been the best PlayStation mascot franchise, in my opinion, out of all of them. The setting is fantastic, the voice acting is phenomenal, the gameplay is so smooth, and each game is a completely different experience. 1 through 3, granted, were remastered from the PlayStation 2 era onto the PlayStation 3 era with the Sly Collection, but they never got a fully from the ground up remake treatment with all those games. And even then, the PlayStation 3 Master was good, but it still kind of had that more, like, not pixelated, but more rustic looking. Uh, simplistic graphic art style. And if we were to get a PlayStation 5 remake, again, from the ground up, with current next-generation graphics and what they can do with franchises that what we're seeing with Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, then there's absolutely no reason why Sony should be deterring from the fact that Sly Cooper is one of the most beloved gaming franchises out there, and having him get a comeback in such a grandiose way would be insane. But if we could get the entire trilogy fully remade from the ground up onto the PlayStation 5 console and bring new life and new fans to that amazing cast of characters and just how fun and innovative that gameplay was for the time and remaking it for a new era would be a mind-blowing thing to see. I think that would be great to just give more love to Sucker Punch. They're one of my favorite developers of all time and either choosing Infamous or Sly to come back in such a great way would be a dream come true. Now next on the list is actually a game which is easily, easily, without a doubt, one of my favorite games of all time. And luckily, thank God, luckily, the game can actually be played currently, right now, on the PlayStation 4, and I do also believe the Xbox One, but it's simply a remaster, or pretty much a port, of the old game that came out back in the mid-2000s. And I've wanted a sequel to this game for ages. For ages. And I love this studio to death because they make amazing encapsulating stories with grandiose open world uh, engaging experiences. But this particular franchise of theirs has received little to no love in the past decade plus. And there's always been little rumors and hints and mumblings about a possible sequel or something continuing the series. But it's always seemingly cancelled or they're focusing more on their bigger properties. And that of course I'm talking about none other than Rockstar Studios with their franchises of Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption, but mainly my boy Jimmy Hopkins from Bully. Bully is, not even kidding, the best Rockstar game that has ever come out. I love Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto 4 is my favorite Grand Theft Auto. 5 was great, but 4 is my favorite. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a masterpiece. I really, really loved it, and same with the first game. It definitely deserved all the, the awards it got back in 2018. God of War, though, won uh, Game of the Year during that year. But there's been little to no love, in the slightest, for Bully. Bully is phenomenal. If you guys haven't played it, which I definitely recommend that you should, since again, you can play the Scholarship Edition on PlayStation 4, you're basically a transfer student in a boarding school, and you live your day-to-day -day life going to school, talking to friends, going to classes, but you're also kind of a bully if you want to act like that and just mingle with the other classmates within Bullworth Academy and explore the town of Bullworth in a really fun way, and you get up to these crazy antics with some of the characters that you meet along the way. Having that remade for next gen in a completely new way, if we don't get a sequel of Bully or a remaster that actually looks more polished, just remake the masterpiece that is the Bully, the first Bully game, the Bully Scholarship Edition, for the PlayStation 5 or Series X, in any way, shape, or form, I would kill for that. I would actually die laughing if, out of all the other properties that, uh, you know, Rockstar decides to bring back, their previous Grand Theft Autos, maybe some other older Red Dead Redemption, like they remake the first Red Dead, that'd be cool. No, I need Bully, I need Bully 2 right now. Either a sequel or a remake of Bully 1 is necessary for gamers to play. I think that would be the greatest decision that Rockstar ever made, and seeing it on next gen would make me instantly buy a PlayStation 5. I still need one for myself. I really want to play Marvel Spider-Man Remastered and Miles Morales on my PS5, but if they say tomorrow, announce Bully 2, or Bully Remake coming for the PlayStation 5 sometime next year. I'm doing whatever I can to get that console, for sure. I need a Bully 2 or Bully Remake instantly, 
and that would be the greatest thing to see coming from Rockstar. Now for the second to last pick on my list is a game that I have mentioned previously, but not a lot of you guys actually are aware as to what this series is, and I definitely think in my personal opinion, in terms of the JRPG format, this series as a whole, this franchise, is more emotionally impactful and just more entertaining for me personally, my opinion, than Final Fantasy. The entirety of Final Fantasy is a great series. It's a lot to take in though to dive into any one of those games. For this series though, Persona 5 is my game of the year for 2020. Persona 5 Royal, I should say, specifically. Even more so than Miles Morales was my game of the year of last year. It is a masterpiece of a game, the story is phenomenal, the graphics are insane, the soundtrack is unlike anything you'll ever hear in any other game, and if you are starting off in the Persona franchise for the very first time, I would highly recommend to play Persona 5 Royal before you play any other Persona game, because that is the definitive experience of Persona 5 that you'll ever play. So don't uh, remake that game because it's already relatively new, it came out last year, so it's good enough. But, if you are aware, this upcoming September is the 25th anniversary of the Persona series. And there's a lot of rumors and possible mumblings of a Persona 3 remake for current gen slash next gen. Now there are, is obviously Persona 4 and Persona 4 Golden, but Persona 3 is one of the more overlooked uh, installments of the franchise. Granted, Persona 1 and Persona 2 are more overlooked than those other games, but Persona 3 has a lot that can be done to remake it for a current generation platform. And I love Atlas as a developer. Again, Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, and Catherine are great games from them, but Doing something now with those older games, which really do need some HD improvements, either in a remaster, I think remaking it instead, uh, with of course you have the main protagonist, uh, Makoto or Minato, voiced by my man Yuri Lowenthal, but also there's the female protagonist in the other version of the game. So there's a lot of variety when it comes to that installment in the Persona franchise, more so than Persona 4, Persona 4 Golden, or Persona 5, and Persona 5 Royal. And Atlas have said that they have a lot of plans in store for their upcoming anniversary for the Persona series. So, if they decide to remake Persona 3 out of all the other installments in that series, I think it would be a great move on their part. I would then be able to replay it on modern platforms. I have played Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, and Persona 4 Golden, but I never really got around to playing the older versions of Persona 3. And I think that would be great if they do want to go all out with their anniversary for this game series and remake Persona 3 for new players would be a fantastic move and I think would just pour more love into the series to get more players entranced with that game's world more so than what they already have with Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, and Persona 5 Strikers being the mainstream installments that a lot of people think of when they think of the game name Persona. And last on the list everyone is obviously a game I know all my hardcore Spidey fans and Mary Marvelites out there will know from their heart and soul However, I think this might be a legal impossibility nowadays considering the current rights that do relate to this character and his massive ties to Sony being the main publisher for his games in the current medium of the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 with the franchise going forward into next gen. But this is an all-time classic superhero game. It is one of, if not the best, superhero games out there. It is the blueprint for how superhero games were made going forward, one of the first 3D superhero games to ever exist, and in my personal opinion, one of the best stories of this character ever told in gaming, and that is of course none other than Spider-Man 2000 or Spider-Man PS1 or Spider-Man N64 developed by Neversoft. This game is again a masterpiece. It is one of my personal favorite Spider-Man games of all time. Fun fact, it is Brian Intar, the creative director of Spider-Man PS4. It's his personal favorite Spider-Man game of all time, and I think we can all agree, no matter how much we all love that game, Though those early games, the early 2000s games of Spider-Man made by Neversoft and Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro made by Vicarious Visions have easily aged the worst out of all other superhero games out there. They're very much, you know, pixelated, not in the sense of like 8-bit style, but they're very old school in how they're actually visually portrayed. The gameplay is a bit rustic, it's a bit stiff at times, but given that was the, again, the first major three-dimensional Spider-Man game to ever be made on the PlayStation 2 era of consoles, I think they pulled off an incredible job, PlayStation 1 specifically, but you can play it backwards compatible with PlayStation 2, and that's how I played it uh, for the first time 
uh, as a kid, and I loved it. It's a fantastic game, and should be remade. It should be remade from the ground up, and imagine that game with current generation graphics and a just a bit more polished of a combat system, and seeing all those iconic moments, again, play out with Venom with Doc Ock, with Carnage, with Daredevil, with Black Hat, with Rhino, all these iconic moments in the game, defining Spider-Man to a T in the gaming realm. And it set, again, the overall blueprint for where game developers can take superheroes and their franchises into the gaming format. And I know it would probably be impossible since those were published by Activision, those older games of Spider-Man, and now Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man, so they probably legally can't do it, but if there's any sorcery or magic that can be done to bring back this masterpiece of a game and remake it from the ground up onto next gen with the PlayStation 5, uh, while we're waiting, of course, for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac, I think would be insane to see and would easily, easily sell like hotcakes. I can guarantee you that right now. If anyone's watching from Sony, PlayStation, or Marvel, please... Do our boy Spidey justice. Reno Romano Spidey as a sidebar is one of my favorite voice actors to voice Spider-Man. I think he's iconic, and just that whole game is just one of the best encapsulations of the Spider-Man character in gaming. But with all that said, everyone, that's the video that I have for you today. Those are the top five picks on my list for the remakes of games I believe we desperately need to happen one way or another. Again, Infamous 1, any one of the Sly Cooper games, Bully, please God Bully, uh, Spider-Man PS1 slash Spider-Man 2000, and if by any chance, Persona 3 onto next gen. I think those games are fantastic. They are great examples of taking an old game that can be remade in a great way for a newer generation and breathe life into it that people may have not seen before and do it justice in a way that may have not been possible with the older generation of consoles. I think it is definitely possible for any one of these games to be made, maybe not Spider-Man because the legal issues, but... It would be great, no matter what. I think it would be insane, and I'm just preaching to the choir here for gamers out there, but uh, it would be wonderful. Uh, but anyways, guys, that's the video that I have for you today. Please leave a like if you did enjoy, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Let me know your personal top five picks of games that you definitely think need to be remade for the current times. And uh, with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos down the line. But without further ado, stay spectacular, Spidey fans. Stay Merry Marvelites, and stay awesome gamers. Peace out.